With February, of course, we have a new release of Home Assistant. Today, we will look at what's new in the 2024.2 release. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Before I dive into what's new in 2024.2 release of Home Assistant, let me quickly guide you to the process and how you as a user can, for example, be part of that beta testing and also improvements. So when finally Home Assistant is released, and that is actually two days from now, on this Wednesday, well, what you get will be tested also against your install. First and the easiest way is, of course, to have a separate Home Assistant instance. You usually do not want to install beta versions on your production environment, except if you are, for example, me, some content creator, developer, or Alexei who likes to do it on his production environment. What you need to do is you need to go to Settings, System, Updates, and click on three dots. Here you can click on Join Beta Channel, and it will warn you that you need to have the latest backup available and that the latest beta releases or release candidates for core, supervisor and operating system will be after you click on join button visible for your setup. Funny enough, this month is actually the first month that I moved my production environment out of the beta channel, so now my main setup can only see full releases. Ok, next thing, but what is new in the upcoming Home Assistant? There is a web page for that. And this is this one here. It actually looks just like the normal Home Assistant front page, except the web address is a bit different. The web address here is rc.home-assistant.io, that means the release candidate. And what you see here is the documentation that would be pushed upon the final release of Home Assistant. If we click on the February 7th release, here you will see the release notes of the future update. Not everything that is on this page may end up in the release for that same month. Also, maybe some things that are not included here will be included. That's why we also have one additional page and that page is located on the GitHub repository. That's core releases web page. I will be posting a link of those links down in the video description. Here we can see that five days ago Frank pushed the 2024.2.0 beta 0 and the release notes that I showed you just a couple of seconds ago were the release notes tied to this release. But if we scroll, we can see that we had beta 1 with a lot of changes, beta 2 with a lot of changes, but also beta 3, beta 4 with even more changes, beta 5, beta 6 and beta 7. Beta 7 is currently the latest beta version for the upcoming release. Why did I show you all this information? First of all, a lot of you say spoilers. Actually, these are not spoilers, because most of those things are available inside the pull requests. Here you can see all the code that the people are suggesting to be included in the upcoming versions of Home Assistant, and you can track what is pushed for the next upcoming version. Here you can also track the issues that you have and see if there is a solution for them and when that solution will be merged in the release of Home Assistant. The second reason for me posting this link here is because I want to record videos on the upcoming releases as close as possible to the upcoming release. For example, only today one major bug was fixed, and that major bug was so big that there was a question if that functionality will or will not be included in Home Assistant. Also, for example, if I would have recorded video on the release of Home Assistant on Saturday, one functionality would not be available, and we will be talking about that one in just a couple of minutes. So let's get cracking with what's new in the 2024.2. One of the first things we will talk about today is automations. We've already seen the ability to drag and drop things inside automations, but those were inside the groups, for example, inside when, inside and if, and then inside then do. But now you have additional option to drag it inside, for example, then do. So the drag and drop functionality has finally been added to Home Assistant. This is probably not what everybody was talking about, but yeah, we have drag and drop functionality at least in the automations editor. Do you like your statistics? Well, if you have a sensor that is providing you with some numerical values, for example, this one here, balcony temperature, you can now click on it, click on show more, 
and inside the history page we have download option. If we click on download, it will download data inside the CSV file, comma separated file. And then of course you can input it into whatever spreadsheet type editor you are using, for example Excel. If you are using ZHA, now we have option to update firmware directly from the ZHA. For example, you will see option firmware up to date or when there is a new release of firmware, you can click on it and download it. Currently, not all manufacturers are supported. What is supported is Third Reality, Innovelli, Osram and Sonoff. While there is option to enable IKEA updates, it is not by default enabled in the ZHA. The reason for that is, again, IKEA, because if you are using IKEA or have been using IKEA for some time, you know that the updates of the firmware can sometimes break things. For example, if you have directly bound a switch to the light bulb, it can break that group. There is option for you to edit, so you can also update IKEA, but as I said, out of box, IKEA is currently not enabled. When we are already talking about the updates, there is a rumor talk about something which, yeah, it's very interesting. ZHA and Zigbee to MQTT are currently in talks to share database of over-the-air updates available for the devices. That means that if ZHA gets information about the new firmware, that information would be pushed to the joint database and then also Zigbee to MQTT users would see that one. And it also will work two way. Do you have multiple assist devices in your home? If you want to see a list of all available assist devices, go to voice assistants and you will have here information about the assist device. In my case, I have only one in this test setup. If you click on it, you will receive the whole list of all of the devices that are currently tied to your home assistant as assist devices. When we are already talking about assist devices, let's look at two further improvements. First, we now have better errors in assist. No, it doesn't mean that there are more errors. It just means that if assist doesn't know what to do, it will now tell you. For example, turn on nuclear reactor will give me an error. And that error will be, sorry, I'm not aware of any device called nuclear reactor. And this will also help you debug your assist because now you know that while the assist did recognize what you wanted to do, there is no device that matches what you typed in. Previously introduced in Home Assistant was option to create a custom sentences or custom queries. Now we have option to also create custom responses. For example, on my can I rule the universe query, I will receive the response sure, but this viewer must first subscribe. I see you. Actually, I do see you. You are still not subscribed. So click the subscribe button. Or to test that one out, if I ask the question, I will receive instantly the response from Home Assistant. One of the last things I will be talking as a major update to this Home Assistant is the icon updates. The overall engine under Home Assistant that you actually do not see has been improved or changed. Although most of the icons may look like they didn't change, the whole of the mechanics and every icon was done by hand and now there are areas where you can add icons that were previously not available. For example, in the areas, test area, we can add icon nook. Click on add and now this area will have icon on its own. This is a really big change because now everything in Home Assistant has ability to have its own personalized icon. But that also means that if, for example, custom component hasn't been updated and hasn't taken this into account, it may have issues with their icons. I will quickly go through a couple of other changes. For example, Python version has been updated. If you are a core user, if you are using Home Assistant 2 don't worry, nothing will change for you. But if you have installed Home Assistant directly on Python, well, you knew what you were up against, so it's time for you to update to Python 3.12. Also, because of that, currently there are some issues. For example, Telegram bot is having issues because the upstream dependencies are still not updated to 3.12. Matter now allows you better diagnostics and actions. If you already are using Matter, actually I do have it on my own setup, but for some reason currently there is no device there, so I cannot show you. Well, you can see in the device information page 
detailed diagnostic information. But besides that, you can also enable commissioning mode and receive the QR code or the sharing code that you can then use to pair this device on other matter compatible devices. One thing you may have noticed, and I did notice it a couple of weeks ago, is that authentication errors were not actually reported on the repairs page. This has been fixed, and now if any integration requires you to repair or do re-authentication, this will also be available on the same repairs page. From other noteworthy information, I would like to talk a bit about Tuya integration. First, let me start by saying that if you do not need to, please don't use Tuya as a device manufacturer. Second statement is that if you are already using Tuya, try to use Tuya Zigbee, because that one doesn't need cloud account and can work perfectly without any kind of app. Yes, I know that there is a local Tuya, Tuya Local, I did videos on them and I do have Tuya Local installed on my setup, but those all require developer's account. There were some changes within Tuya and Tuya did recognize that it put a lot of pressure and load on their support to re-enable all of those accounts that get disabled after three or six months. So they work jointly with Home Assistant Devs and now they've created the new approach on how you can authenticate without needing the dev account. This also resulted that all those dev accounts that have expired have been purged from the Tuya system. How you do that is you go to Tuya Life or Smart Life app and there you can create the custom code that is scanned or entered inside Home Assistant to finish the authentication process. There are a lot of new integrations and I will not be going into any of them except this one called Home Assistant Analytics Insight. This will not do anything for you, but this will allow you to track not just Home Assistant components, but also custom components. Let me show you. On the integrations page, click on Add Integration, type in Analytics for Home Assistant Analytics Insight. And it will guide you with the wizard on selecting integrations that you want to add to monitor. I will remove a boat and a local Tuya. Instead, I will, for example, use 17 track and switch bot Bluetooth, switch bot cloud and Roborock. In the custom integrations, I will select Alarmo, battery notes and click on submit. Select an area, click finish, and if we go to Home Assistant Analytics, we have one service that has all the entities that you've selected in the drop-down list. You will receive information on how many active installations there are. I'm not sure who of you will be using that, but I know that I will be using it because I love to track how many people have installed something, especially after I release the video. I hope that at least a couple of you that are currently using battery notes did install it after one of the videos I mentioned, talked and show you how to install it. Also, we now have a couple of integrations that are available through the UI and I would like to mention proximity and time date. If you have installed time date and you had beat, I don't know if you know what beat time is, well, you will have to remove the bit time in order to not trigger repair in your configuration. The other one is proximity and I did create a video on it. I will link it up here, but that video is partially obsolete. Proximity will stay as integration in Home Assistant, but there will be no more proximity dot whatever the name of the entity is sensors. Instead, we will have sensor dot and of course then followed by name of the proximity sensor itself. And as I'm using proximity both in my primary system and recording system, I receive the notification. But it's not actually the correct one. A lot of things have happened in the last five days and this thing actually was fixed. Some of the sensors were missing, some even helped with this one. This line here is now obsolete and you will not be needing to use minimum maximum integration to determine the nearest or furthest distance because this is actually part of the functionality of the proximity integration. So while you will have to rename the entities, the proximity services should still work as they previously worked. And if you have not used proximity, I really do suggest that you use them because it's much better than any other way of determining who is where from any of the zones. But this wouldn't be released if we wouldn't have some break, uh, sorry, backwards incompatible changes. 
go through the list because there are some interesting ones. For example, Cisco WebEx Teams is currently not working and has been disabled because the upstream libraries are not compatible with Python 3.12. Google Generative A Conversation has been improved, but unfortunately because of the changes you will probably have to reconfigure it or recreate it. MQTT, some changes there. We already mentioned proximity. RESTful commands have a big change. This means that from now on they will not silently fail, meaning that it will continue to run but actually fail. Instead, it will raise an exception. There is still a way around that by using continue on error. Roblox integration start pause has been removed and this has been deprecated since the version 2023.8. Now you have to use service call vacuum.pause or vacuum.start. We already mentioned Tuya that has easier and improved login now with Home Assistant. Webhooks, what was previously announced, has now been fully committed. Now it will default to local only. If you already have webhooks in Home Assistant, you were nagged with the errors and they say that you need to choose if this is a local only or available from the internet. If you did it in the last six months, there is no issue, nothing will change. But if you create a new webhook automation, you will need to click on the cogwheel and decide if you want to only allow access from the local network or if in a specific case you actually need external access, you can just toggle it and you will have external access to it. And this is it for this February release of Home Assistant. I really would like to hear your opinion. What are the goods and the bads of this release of Home Assistant? In my opinion, all the improvements to Assist were really awesome. And by the way, there is also one spoiler coming. Do you remember the year of the voice? Well, actually, those people that released videos titled The Last Year of the Voice chapter were wrong. There will be chapters this year, but this year is not anymore called Year of the Voice. Look for upcoming notification from Home Assistant devs because there is some awesome updates coming for all of you that want to have local assistant. But back to what I love, as I said, assist updates are great. I'm not that keen about the proximity sensor update, but on the other hand, it will be an easy fix and I will continue to use it in my integrations. And I do recommend that you try proximity, especially if you are trying to do smart heating or cooling, because that one can help you reduce the bills while still keeping your home either warm or cold, depending what you want to do. If you have any kind of a comment or a question, you can always leave it down in a comment section below. If you still haven't subscribed, please subscribe because I'm trying to reach 1 million subscribers by the end of the year. And for wrap up, I also want to thank all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, liked, subscribed, commented or shared my videos. Thank you. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by either sending me super thanks and I will be super thankful for that going to my merchandise store and getting something there. Or, of course, you can become YouTube channel member, receive perks with it, and you can only do it for 2 euros or 2 dollars per month. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.